Speaking with us is internationally renowned Michelle Guzzi, the mind coach. She is a hypnotherapist who specializes in past life regression. She also works with parallel lives and future lives. This, this is a mind-blowing therapy that can resolve many issues and many challenges. Sometimes it even results in physical changes with the subject while they're under this hypnosis. It, it's totally a fascinating discussion. So please stick around. Welcome to Karma Hub. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy it. Sometimes I will see changes in, fee in people's body during the past life. I've had people speak in different languages. I've had people write in hieroglyphics. I have people who can write in different languages. I've had people go into full-blown channel in past lives. So um, I had one person's eye color changed. This is why I record it, because when you come back and you say, well, who was that French person that came into the, into the office? And I said, no, that was you. You're speaking fluent French. Well, I don't know how to speak French. Right. Well, in your past life, you did. And so that's wow. why we have that recording of you speaking fluent French. And the cool thing with past life regression and with hypnosis, because people always ask me, well, how do you know it's real? How do you know somebody just didn't make that up? Right. And my answer to them is I really don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Because even if you're unconscious and your subconscious mind has made it up, which you perfectly can do, it's fine with me. If you have a release from it, if you have a catharsis, if you have an aha moment that says, oh, well, this is when that first started. And that was then, and this is now, and I don't need to be connected to it anymore. And you can let it go and be free of that pain or free of that fear or that anger that you have for this person that you don't even know why. That's, that's my goal. That's right, my the healing goal. worked. It, 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 the healing worked. Past life regression, which is what we're going to talk a little bit about today, um, is, is one of the many practices you practice through hypnotherapy, right? So I uh, went on your website, of course, looked around a bit, and needless to say, I was very impressed. So you've been on Entertainment Tonight, the Oprah Winfrey Network, Sci-Fi Channel, the uh, VH1, Fox, MTV, CBS, ABC, the Discovery Channel, and of course, the list just kind of went on and on and on and on and on. Um, so thank you so much for being with us. This is great. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's very nice to have you. Thank you. I appreciate um, it. So please tell me, how, how did you get into this? I understand you've been doing this for a long time and you started at an early age, but mm -hmm. uh, some of the details around that? Love to share that with you. So, well, first off, they call me the mind coach because I, 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 I'm not so much a, a therapist, even though I'm a hypnotherapist, but I love to coach people's minds. It's all about getting into that mindset that you can do anything you set your mind to do. And that my motto is always this, all answers lie deep within your mind. You just have to be willing to look inside. And all of that information that you need is in there. And so I actually grew up in Alaska and I grew up mm -hmm. with all boys in the family. I grew up a little different than living in Los Angeles. So we were camping and fishing and camping and fishing and fi a lot of fishing going on up there okay. and out in the wilderness. So I was always, I was very into nature and just really connecting with, with animals. And, and, you know, I, I realize now that at a ver very early age, I was connected to source or connected to spirit. I was very intuitive. Um, I knew what people were thinking and I was almost kind of like an, an empath. I could pick up on energy as well. And how I got into hypnosis and actually past life regression is that I had a girlfriend that I grew up with and we were, it's almost like we were telepathic. We just could talk without talking. And she had uh, in her home, a library, her dad had a library and had all of these books and one day we went and snuck in the library. We weren't supposed to be there. And we Thanks found a book on hypnosis. And in that book, it had regression techniques and it had past life regression techniques. And I don't know why, but I just grabbed that book and we ran out of there and we ran back to my house and I took that book and I started reading it. 
And I realized I knew how to do it. And so I called her back over a few days later and I said, I want to do one of these past life regressions on you. Let's see what happens. And so I went and took her downstairs in the house to the darkest place that I could figure that we should go. And that was in one of the bathrooms. And I had all the blankets and all the pillows and I had some candles. I had, you know, younger brothers. So I put a sign on the door that said, do not enter past lives in progress. So nobody would bother me. And I just had her lie down on the floor and I put a pillow on my lap and I was leaning up against the wall and I put her head on my hands and I just invented a, a hypnotic induction. I don't know why I did it, but I did it. And I just started rocking her head, you know, back and forth. And I counted down from 100 down to zero. And I said, when we get down to zero, we're going to enter another life. And she did. Wow. And we're, this is nine years old. We are in fourth grade and we started practicing these on each other. And we were having full blown journeys of these past lives. We kept a journal with it and we were seeing things that we never learned in school yet. Plus we were in Alaska. We didn't go to the movies very much. We didn't have a sci-fi channel. We didn't have, you know, ancient aliens on TV where we can connect with stuff. It was all library. It was all in the books. And I really wasn't reading much up on that, but we were having full journeys to where we would see ourselves in the past life. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, the different modalities of how you can do it, but we were there and I was hanging out with Cleopatra. I was back in Native American time. I was doing a lot of these things and it got to a point where we were so good at it that we could go into past lives, not say in anything, go in by ourselves and then come back. And then we would say, well, where, where were you and who were you? And we would go into the same past life together. And we would be like brother and sister or family members or friends or something. And it was just, it was, it was magical. And we didn't tell a lot of people, but what started to happen is that we were getting such detailed information that when we were in school and the teacher would talk about history uh, and, you know, back in the olden days, I, I would start raising my hands and, and the teacher would say, well, what do you, you know, you have a question? I said, well, that's not oh, what that's happened. So cool. That's not at all what happened. And she's like, well, what do you mean? I said, that's not what happened. I was there. I saw it. So I was in the principal's office all wow. the time because the teacher was just wrong. She was flat out wrong. And so we just finally stopped, you know, telling people. And then I learned later on that a lot of that stuff, of course, in the history books is wrong. That's and we do have more evidence now, but. I was seeing it. I was there. And so my journey with hypnosis and past life started in elementary school. And then it just kind of snowballed into there. So it was quite interesting. Now, did you find that it was, well, aside from getting you in trouble at school, because you knew things the teachers didn't, what was it helpful to you all when you were younger? I mean, I, I know you found it entertaining, Yeah. but was there some part of it that was you're like, Hey, I can actually use this to help people. I mean, or were you even, even aware of that sort of, you know, yep. I was not aware of it at that time because I was so young. Um, but I did start just reading up on, you know, different books and different modalities. Actually, I remember getting the book Dianetics in high school and that was with L Ron Hubbard. And I did, it was not talking about Scientology, none of that stuff. But that was really fascinating with me because it was talking about just universal dimensions and other possibilities and connecting the mind and body. So I thought that book was awesome. And then I come out to L.A. when I was 19 and learn all about Scientology and so forth. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I had that book. I had that book when I was young. So it, it I think it just it sparked an interest for me. So when I did move to Los Angeles, I was about 19 years old. Um, a few years later, I was, I think about how old, so about 24. Uh, I found out about the Hypnosis Motivation Institute and, and that was it. I enrolled and, you know, started my, my training with hypnotherapy at a very, very young age. So that was about 30 years ago, by the way. So how 30 years ago. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so how does this modality assist your clients 
Like what benefit? I mean, I would, I personally would love to do a past life regression. Um, I actually have, and it was really fantastic. Um, I, I did with a shaman and it was one of the more memorable experiences that I've had. It was, uh, I couldn't stop bawling for like an hour. Really? It was like, wow. you, yeah. Yeah. I, I let go of a lot. It was very cool. Um, so, I mean, that was healing for me. Um, but how would you say it generally helps people out aside from just being people being curious about what they experienced in, in past lives or what they believe they've experienced? Mm -hmm. Well, in order to understand past life regression, you need to understand what hypnosis is and what hypnotherapy is. And basically hypnotherapy is just, it's behavior modification counseling. That's all it is. It's just working with behaviors. It's mind, body, spirit connection. And the hypnotherapy field allows us to work with a lot of interesting modalities that's, uh, you know, we, we don't work with the abnormal psychiatric disorders or, you know, mental health illnesses and so forth. But we work with everyday people with everyday issues. And hypnosis is a state of suggestibility. So I always tell my clients, if you just take that word and just throw it away, it is literally just suggestibility. And we're suggestible to everything all the time. It's how we take in information. It's how our mind processes. It's literally how we learn. So what we see and hear and feel and taste and smell has to come in through a form of, of hypnosis. And so hypnosis takes us from a conscious state and we are able to communicate with the subconscious mind and then go down into some people call it the unconscious mind. And past life regression, it's a modality of hypnotherapy. And it's just a way of going in to find out if you've possibly lived a life before. So okay. who were yeah. you before this lifetime? Okay. And there are so many beliefs around the world. We have religious beliefs, cultural beliefs in reincarnation that goes back hundreds of thousands of years. This is not new. Um, and it is just a belief system that some people have. It's not for everybody. It's just a modality for me that, you know, our, our soul, our spirit, our soul is just energy and it never dies. And it has an option of being able to come back and come into different forms and incarnate again to have experiences. And, and sometimes when people come in and they do sessions, I tell them you're not always human when you go into a past life, because if this, this is your, your spirit, this is your soul, it can take on any form, then you can be animal. I've had people, I had a lady who was a dolphin. Um, I know we were talking, I had a, a client, she was a dinosaur. That was one of yes. my favorite ones. She was a baby dinosaur dinosaur. baby. <laughs> I loved it. She was so cute. Um, I had a guy who was a mountain the other day. He literally was just a mountain. It was that energy of being a mountain. So you could be all different forms. You're not always from this planet either. So it's just, it's just an energy experience. And people come in to do past life regression therapy to either find out, number one, they're just really, really curious because they've heard different things all of their life, you know, uh, and they just want to know, what, what, number one, why am I here? Why am I in this body? And some people want to know specifics. Well, why did I pick my parents? You know, why did I pick this body if I'm going to have all this illness or disease or this pain? Why would I want to be born into a difficult situation? And I always have these habits or, you know, situations that are taking place in my life. And people are curious as to relationships that they have, the pains that they have. Um, but most of the time people come in because they have a fear or a phobia in this lifetime. And they have no concept why it's there because nothing has happened in this life. So it's, it's a curiosity of going in to find answers to the why and the how and the what and the where and the who and, you know, how come, you know, how come I'm here? So you had mentioned the other day, and I wrote it down because I thought it was fantastic. It was, you said, um, past life regression opens the doors to a deeper level of the mind where communication between the spiritual and logical um, self takes place. 
Mm-hmm. It is through this access that we understand who we are and what we are in relation to the universal connection. Um, yeah, I just think that's so fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Because this is just a body. This is just a body. And you know, our, our, our physical bodies can only do so much. But we have intuition. We have a sixth sense. We have a knowing. I mean, when you stop and just ask yourself certain questions, um, I'm sure you've had experiences before, just like everybody who's listening and watching to where maybe you've been someplace, you've traveled, you've been someplace and you felt like you have been there before, or you're just dying to go to a certain location. I just can't wait. I, I, I haven't been to Thailand yet, but I just am dying to go to Thailand. I would love to go there. Right. And see, you know, what is it? What is it that keeps calling me to go to this location? Um, we've all met somebody in our life where we felt like I've, I've, I've known you. I've seen you before. How do I know you? And it's just this instant connection to where we like them. Or you've met somebody and don't know anything about them, but you don't like them. Like, I don't like that person. Why? They haven't even done anything to you. I don't know. I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter. I don't like that person. Right. <laughs> so we've been places where we feel a connection. We've seen people where we have this connection. Uh, you're a musician. How did you decide to be a musician in this lifetime? So I've had clients who are, are prodigies. And okay. they came into this life. And when they were just a very, very young child, just knew how to play the piano. Never had a lesson before, but they just knew how to play the piano. How do people just know how to sing the way they do or play certain sports? So it's just a it's just a connection that's happening here. But we all have had those deja vu experiences or felt like we've you know, been somewhere or met somebody. And then you also have experiences where it comes in through your dream time. And that's when a lot of past life memories show up because that's the safest place for you to have them because you can come out and say, oh, well, that was just a dream. I was back in the 1700s, but that was just a dream. I was back, you know, hanging out with the dinosaurs, that, but that was just a dream. So that's when it comes up most of the time for people. Do you have people that just don't believe in any of this sit with you? And do they go somewhere? And what are their, some of their thoughts after they experience this experience? Well, clients call from all around the world, all different backgrounds, all different cultures, because I'm international with that. And what I find the most fascinating is when people contact me and they have no background in meditation, they've never done yoga, they've never experienced hypnosis before. Uh, They don't really understand the visualization process, but there's, there's, there's something about a past life, something has happened or somebody told them you need to go and do this. And so they have no concept of it and they are the best subjects because they are just like blank slates. And I will explain the breakdown of, of how it all works and the different levels we can go in, but when they can come in and just be so open and curious, then that's when we have the best experiences because they just go there. And so those guys uh, are there. They're in what I call the deepest level, the somnambulist level of hypnosis. And when they enter those past lives, they are seen through their eyes as if they were there. They were feeling it. They're smelling it. They're tasting it. They're there, actually there. Other times people see it more like a a movie or they're watching a video. Um, So people can come in and have no, no idea what's going to happen and have just full blown catharsis. And they can also have a a spontaneous healing with these past lives as well. Yeah. So what types of healing, like how, how does this help people having this awareness? So let's go, yeah, let's go into some of the medical issues that people will come in for. So when you have a doctor that tells you, that pain that you have is all in your head or that illness that keeps coming back. There's, we cannot find anything medically and physically wrong with you. It's all in your head. And yes, it could be psychosomatic. You could be creating it because of stress or whatever's happened in the environment or, you know, the people that are around you, but people, for example, um, who have, uh, 
I had one lady was amazing. She had, she could not wear anything around her neck. She couldn't wear anything around her um, arms, no, no hmm. tight jewelry, no tight collars or sleeves. So kind of like she was always in short sleeve shirts and, and open collars and stuff. And she just says, I, I always have a feeling like if it's up here too high, then I'm going to be choked. Um, and I, I, I just can't breathe. Nothing ever happened to her. And I will tell my clients before they even do a session, please check in your history right now and just ask family and friends if anything ever happened in this lifetime. Because if it's, if it's something that's happened in this lifetime, I can desensitize it and let it go. But if the answer is no, and there's no memory of that, and nobody says anything to you, then I can go into a past life and pinpoint possibly in that past lifetime when you first had this issue. And so she went all the way back. And my goodness, I think, um, uh, well, let's just say she was a, a lady of the of the streets. We'll put it back. <laughs> we'll put right. it out there yeah. way back in the day in, in, in London. Mm -hmm. And that's how she made a living. She had quite a few kids. And so she needed to uh, earn, an, earn some money. And she came across a, a bad situation. And she literally was choked to death. And she went in that experience and we could, we have options when we do a past life. I can let you relive it as if you were there. We can rise above it. We can watch it, like I said, as if it's a movie or we're on a, just a big TV screen. And she wanted to relive that experience. And so it was a very traumatic experience for her. But what's really cool with doing past lives is even though you may be kind of feeling what you were feeling back then or seeing it or going through it, you're also here in this in this time. Okay, You cannot die in a past life. You can't choke in a past life. When we're in hypnosis, you can't actually have this happen to you. You may have some of the symptoms, but it's a very safe process. And so she had that aha moment. Past life regression triggers these realizations. And she just realized that was the core. That was the source of my fear that I have of wearing stuff and having my hands, you know, uh, bound. Cause that's what happened. Her hands were tied up and she was choked to death by this, by this man in this past life. And when we came out, I always do a release process with it to where we take what we need and leave the rest behind. And that was then, and this is now. And to allow the subconscious mind to, you know, thank you for bringing up that information. And as we go consciously into this lifetime, we can let go of that trauma. Okay. And then we've learned from it. What is the lesson that we learned from it? And that in this lifetime, that's not happening. And so she came out and she was crying. It was a very emotional session. And she just, all of a sudden it just clicked. And she said, that, that, that's not happening now. That was me back then. But because it was so traumatic, she carried over what we call the cellular energy, the cellular memory of that. And when she was, then she kind of remember when she was young, her mom did put a scarf on um, when she went out to play one of the scarves and it was a little too tight. And that's what triggered it in this lifetime. Gotcha. Um, and I always tell clients, you know, give me a call a few days later or give me a call a week later and tell me how you're doing. And she did. And she said, it's just, it's gone. The fear is gone. I'm, I'm okay now. I released it totally and completely. I, I just think that's, that's just super cool. So many therapists in, in general can go back to early childhood. They can do some, you know, um, take you back to an early time. You can go back to other lifetimes and correct issues that have still resonate with this, you know, you on a, on a spiritual or a, a etheric level mm -hmm. that you're having today, that you're having today. Um, I work with the energy of it. It's, it's literally just universal energy. It's source energy. It's cellular energy. And I can take you back to the source. I can take you back to the core of what happened. Now, the cool thing with past life regression and with hypnosis, because people always ask me, well, how do you know it's real? How do you know somebody just didn't make that up? Right. And my answer to them is I really don't care. It doesn't matter to me. 
Because even if your unconscious and your subconscious mind has made it up, which you perfectly can do, it's fine with me. If you have a release from it, if you have a catharsis, if you have an aha moment that says, oh, well, this is when that first started and that was then and this is now and I don't need to be connected to it anymore. And you can let it go and be free of that pain or free of that fear or that anger that you have for this person that you don't even know why. That's that's my goal. That's right, my the healing goal worked. It, it, the healing worked. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I, but it, it is just a belief system. It is a belief system. But well, you also say, mentioned, you know, I, didn't you say you work with, was it parallel lives and also future lives? I do. I do. So past life regression is just one modality. I also work mm -hmm. with life in between lives because pe people want to know, well, what happens to me when I die? Where do I go then in between when I go to that next lifetime? So I'll work with that and we can have experiences to where we can meet um, what we call a council of elders. And you can ask any question that you want. Um, what depends on your belief system. Some people want to communicate with God, goddess, all that there is. They want to communicate with source or that higher power. I work with um, the angelic realm as well. Your spirit guides, you know, a lot of different modalities. And sometimes we also can communicate with those that have already transitioned on your ancestors so that time in between life, that's just you kind of hanging out, floating around and making that, that sole decision. Do I want to come back down to this planet? Sometimes I call it the stupid planet. I'll tell you why here in a minute. Okay. Do I want to come back down to this planet and have all these experiences? Um, and that's a, that's a really cool journey because, you know, you can go wherever you want. Who's to say what's right or wrong with that? Because that's just your journey. And then I also do future life progression. And that's taking you into your next lifetime, not into the future self of this life, but your next lifetime or the next two or three lifetimes and see what happens. So when I do my seminars, past life regressions, I'll do all three of these modalities. And, you know, the future life is the most fun because we're not there yet. We have no concept of what's going to be happening. We know the past. We know what happened with Cleopatra. We know what happened with the Native American Indians. We know what happened with the, the witches. We know what happened, you know, in gladiator times with the Romans. But we don't know what's going to happen in the future. And when I do those seminars, though, I have a whole group of people going into future lives. You won't believe how many times they all come back as we'll talk about those future lifetimes. And they're all saying some of the same things. They're all seeing some of the same things, just in how the buildings are, what's happening with our, our food, our fuel, our transportation, our bodies, how we're communicating. So it's, it's really, really cool to experience a, a future life as well. That is very interesting. Yeah. I'm gonna so take question you when, um, so with typical, well, I say typical as if I really know what, what, what it's all about, but mm -hmm. with hypnotherapy, mm -hmm. oftentimes, let's say smoking, for example, someone comes in and you probably would need to have a couple sessions just to kind of reinforce it, to strengthen the new habit over time. And it, it's, it's very effective. Mm -hmm. um, when you're dealing with past lives, if you're trying to heal a particular wound that happened in a past life. Um, do you have to take them back to that same place each time? Or when you're dealing with past lives and the healing around it, is that for the most part, like a one-time occurrence, like an instantaneous healing of that particular topic? Well, when I do my sessions for past life regressions, that they're actually about four hours. And in the beginning, especially if I haven't met you yet, we're going to sit down. I want to know your life history. Give me a little background about yourself. Tell me about the issues that you have that you want to work on. Or if you're just really open and curious and want to find out what this past life regression is all about, we're going to just spend some time to just get comfortable with each other and get comfortable with the energy. And then I'm going to break down, once again, what hypnosis is, how the conscious subconscious mind works, the different levels of past lives. And in those levels, you know, people may see, hear, feel, taste, smell, have a knowing of it. 
and you may be associated or disassociated from the experience. So I'll break that all down and I'll give them some examples of what's happening. And then when I go into those journeys, you're in hypnosis in past lives for about two hours. And I'm going to take you down into a very, very, very deep state of hypnosis. We don't just go in and just access past lives. I have to go through a whole level of um, tapping into the physical body first. We're going to get really grounded, centered with that and release any uh, expectations, any limiting beliefs. We're going to let that go. And then I'll take you on a regression back from this lifetime all the way back to where before you were born. And we can go into that past life. And when we go into that one past life, because I can do a few of them, I am going to find as much information and detail as possible. I record the sessions for you. So wherever you land, that's where I start. So you may say, well, I'm 38 years old and I'm in Italy right now and I'm in Venice and I'm a merchant and it's, you know, the 1600s. I'm going to start at 38 and I want to see where you are. What do you hear? What are the people around you? What's the experience? I'm going to get all of the knowledge and all I'm doing is asking questions. I don't tell you where to go. I'm not doing a, a psychic reading. No, I'm not doing, you know, like channelers and some, some people do who will tell you your past lives. I'm just going to ask you those questions. And then I'm going to reverse it. I want to go all the way back through the years. Let's go back to when you were a teenager. Let's go back to significant times in your life when you were younger. I want to know about your family. Did you have brothers and sisters? I will ask you what your name is, your first name, your last name, your date, the specific location that you are in. Because when we're done, I want you to research this and look it up. Okay, so the most detail I can get. And then I'll take you forward as well. But when I'm asking questions, what I'm looking for are those significant times, okay? Events that have happened that has possibly triggered that pain or that illness or the question that you have, or the fears that you have, and what was the event behind it, and then we work through it. I also take you through the end of the life. I'm going to go through the whole transitional part of that. So we're going to go from when you were born all the way to the end, and then what happens to you? How do you literally die in that lifetime? And and I I didn't do that before, and then people used to always ask me, well, how did I die? I don't know. (laughs) Go there. How do I know? Um, And so I started doing that because people want to know. And, you know, back in the day, we didn't live very young and we died from illness and and you fell down and you cut yourself. Well, you died from uh, infection. So people didn't have the medicine back then. You died in childbirth and it was a lot of traumatic death, but people wanted to know. So I'll take them through that transition. So I got all of this information, all of the details, and we can look it up. And If we're not having an aha moment in that specific one, I will take you into another lifetime. So in our session, I want to tap into as many lifetimes as we can that can clear up the energy of this. This is not karma. That's something different we can talk about. But just to clear up any of the energetic residual that is still holding on in your physical body that you've come into with this into your body. So we can go into quite a few different lifetimes. And remember, we can go as far back as possible, back to dinosaur time, back to I've had people be caveman, you know, and find out as much as we can. So and then what's really cool about it, it's just like if you were to watch a movie. So for me as a hypnotherapist, I have the remote control. So when you are in hypnosis and you're in a past life, I can pause, I can fast forward, I can slow down, I can rewind, we can hit repeat, we can go back and replay that again, replay that event again. And just like a movie, if you rent a movie or you watch a movie, you, you I'm sure you've seen movies again, haven't you? Absolutely. Maybe, maybe you have a favorite movie that you like. I love Rain Man, you know, I, and right. I can watch that uh, Avatar. I could watch that over and over and over again. So I can have you come back and go into hypnosis again in the next session, go back into that same exact past life and get wow. even more detail. 
So if you need to kind of reinforce whatever healing you to hope to resolve, you can go back to that past life in the exact time and, you know, re- re- uh, reinforce those new neuropathways, I guess. So. Neuropathways. Good. And then I also have like you, you've, you've heard these, some of the MP3s and I'll have you listen to the MP3 and you have the recording of that past life as well. So what clients also do is after the session, I'll say, you know, give it a few days or so, and then go back and listen to it and listen to it more consciously and write down some notes because then they're going to have more information just pop into their head. Or they can go back into it while they're listening to the recording and see what else is is coming in. It might be even more clear as they take that journey. So it's not just a a one session. You have a recording. You have an MP3 that I give you. So it can be an ongoing process of just discovering who you are. Yeah, so I had... Um, I I spoke briefly about it. I had a session with the shaman. Actually, I spent the week in uh, Lilydale. um, um, And that was fantastic. And I took some courses there. And my teacher of this particular course, um, anyway, he did uh, past life regression along with some energy work also. And, you know, it wasn't something I was still pretty early on in this whole weird realm. (laughs) Right. And, um, and, it, weird and it was, to you, uh, it's weird to you. It's a way of life for uh, other people. Well, right? So I, I refer to it as weird, but I, I know it's, it's, it's real. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It's awesome. So it's, it's to me, weird is not a, a, a derogatory term. <laughs> I think it's just fascinating. But uh, you anyway. went to Lilydale where I want to live. If people don't tell, if people don't know what Lilydale is, explain it to them. Uh, you might actually have a better uh, better understanding. I mean, it's a, it's a spiritual. Pe- people just kind of uh, migrated to that particular high energetic um, yeah. region. I guess is that right? And it became a, a spiritual uh, village. Yeah, and yeah. it's still very. I mean, there, there's a lot of spiritualists there, and it, it was a whole week of just wonder and jaw dropping experiences for me. I love it. So, um, so what happened with you with the shamanic experience? So, so you, you know, he started me on this journey and it was really kind of stereotypical, you know, burned at the stake and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, and I'm kind of going along with it and, and just kind of appeasing him. And um, is this what you're coming up with or he's this is stuff telling that, Yeah, no, he's not telling me. Um, I'm coming up with it because maybe it's a story that I've heard many times in my head. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's a presumption that maybe uh, is something that occurred to me a long time ago, but I, I don't know. It's a story that I was coming up with. Con- I I was I believed to be just a conscious story that would kind of fit the mold of what might might occur to me in a prior life. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of just going with the flow, and it was fairly stereotypical. But then it started taking a turn, and more turns, and more turns. And it got very detailed. And then at that point, I was like, this is, this is not, you know, a stereotypical thing. This is not just something I, I, I am regurgitating. These are true events. I was believing them to be true events at some point. And then basically in the end, I asked for forgiveness and I just fell apart like just a complete blob of a crying mess of a person. <laughs> right. Oh. And, um, and I, I, you know, he, he kind of worked with me and I calmed down after some time and he's like, do you want to move forward? I'm like, yeah, that was great. <laughs> you know, and we went forward and, and um, had another just amazing experience. And again, it started, it started kind of, ordinary and then it took some u-turns and it ended extraordinary and and that one you know crushed me even more i mean it was healing but it was just so much to become aware of it was overwhelming and i remember you know he he sat with me for a while and he's like hey listen so we were outside of lilydale by about a Mm -hmm. mile maybe a half a mile and he's like would you like me to drive you back i'm like no i'll just walk so i was walking back (laughs) And Lilydale has this, the cutest little gate, you know, and the people yeah. stationed in this little telephone booth of a place. 
and I'm walking down the street and I am just bawling. My clothes are wet from crying. Wow. Cars are coming by, probably wondering what this, this, this kid is doing, <laughs> you know, all upset. Yeah. And I get to the gate. The people look at me at the gate. I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm going into the village. That's where I need to go. And they're looking at me and I'm like, I'm okay. And, you know, it's, it was all very, very weird and bizarre, <laughs> but um, extremely helpful. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I have so many interesting experiences like that since I've been on this wild ride. And, um, you know, about 10 years ago is when it started. So you had a catharsis, you had an experience and when you got out of your way, when we got out of your, you know, your conscious analytical mind mm -hmm. and you really just tapped into who you were, because they say we store all memories from now to the, the beginning of time. They call it the Akashic or Akashic records. And you, you, you went in, you had a, you had a, you know, a catharsis. You really felt that emotion and it hit you and you know, it hit you. And that stayed with you and that, so that made some, some changes there for you. And once again, whether or not it's real or, or not, it, it, it doesn't matter. It shifted something mm -hmm. with you. It definitely and now look something. at where you are, look at where you are. You're on this journey of doing podcasts and interviewing people with all different backgrounds and modalities. And so maybe that was just an opening for you because back in the day, that's who you were. That's what you did. Yeah. So you're coming, you're coming back to yourself right now. You're coming back to your knowing that you know, if you were burned at the stake and if you were hanging out with us witches back then, you know, we were, we were healers. We, we did plant medicine. We, we just understood the power of, you know, the whole mind body connection. So congratulations, my dear. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> sure. You know, but it's, it's gosh, when you, when you take a look at the fear as to why people are just so nervous with this type of modality, it's because it's, it's programming, you know, hypnosis, we're in a constant state of hypnosis all the time. You watch the TV, you watch the media, the news. I never watch the news. Hey, you know, if you can give me one positive, motivational, inspirational thing in the news, please let me know. Okay. So watch that news today and see if there's at least one piece of good information but it's, it's to keep the masses in check and it's all based in fear. But if you go back, you know, long time ago, you know, go back to Roman times and Greek times, even with Native American, they honored everything. You know, they honored the earth. They honored the animals and the, you know, the fish and the, the sky and the sea and all of this. And they had the oracles, uh, you know, and they had their, their, their healers and their shamanic people that they talked to and they went into trance. So this is not new, but it's when certain you know, politics, medicine, religion, whatever you want to say, came in and started saying, well, that's not possible. You can't possibly heal your body just with your mind or laying on of hands. You can't just put those herbs on here. We're not making any money off of you. So that's when everything started shifting and all of these beliefs that we can heal our body, we can heal our mind. I work with a lot of different people um, and have studied under a lot of different people out here. Bruce Lipton, Joe Dispenza, Greg Braden, Wayne Dyer, all of this stuff. Um, and they've been doing that forever. And so it's, it's, it, this is nothing new. And when we can get out of what, you know, the books say or what, you know, medicine says or religion says and really just get into ourselves, then all of those answers are right there. You are capable of knowing you on a deep level. You are capable of healing yourself. You are capable of attracting, you know, the right relationship, your soulmate, your twin flame. You're capable of having the most amazing job that you want to have, a career of living where you want to live. So it's definitely something that we're all born knowing how to do. We just learn how to forget. Right. And by the way, children, I'll tell you right now, children, little teeny tiny kids, if you have children under the age of four, here's a really fascinating thing to do. 
when they're kind of sleepy or just waking up or, you know, coming up from a nap or going to bed and they're in that little zone, you know, the one I'm talking about, right? They're just kind of in there a little bit. Ask your child this. Who were you before you were in this body? Hmm. And they'll just tell you. Who were you before this body? Who were you? Yes, I had a, a good friend of mine who uh, her brother passed away from a motorcycle accident when um, right, right before her son was born. And they were very, very close, her and her brother. And when her son was born, when he started to learn how to talk and walk and do all of this stuff, uh, he used to point to pictures on the wall and used to point to her, her brother and, and her little son would say, me, that's me. And she'd say, no, 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 that's I'll call him Billy. That's Billy. That was my brother, Billy. That's not, this is you. And he'd say, no, me. And he would go into the closet. Her brother actually lived with her for a little bit before he passed. And she still had all his clothes and his shoes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And her son would go into his closet and put the clothes on mine and put the shoes on and the boots on and walk around in her brother's shoes. These are my shoes. And when grandma, her mother would come over, her son would say, mom, oh, no, grandma this time, your grandma this time. And she called me up. She goes, you're not going to believe this. You're probably not going to believe me. I said, well, you forget who you're talking to. Number one. <laughs> right. Number two, tell me what the hell is happening. She goes, I, I, I think my son is my brother reincarnated and came back into my son's body. Wow. He wasn't done. And she goes, what's really going to be strange is that he did something that only my brother did. And my son just started doing it. She goes, I came home the other day and my son was upstairs and he was running around naked. I'm like, ah, well, that's little boys. That's what they're doing. She goes, no, no, no. He was running around naked and he had a sock on his private parts, on his pee pee. Uh And he was, you know, flopping it around and stuff. And she said, I dropped my bags. I looked up. And I almost passed out because my brother used to do that all the time. And he started at exactly the same age. My son just started doing that. Before the red hot chili peppers, huh? Right. Right there. Right. (laughs) So children go in very, very quickly with this, with this experience because they're in this body fully. They're still connected with source. They're still connected with their spirit and their soul. And then nobody has told them that you, you can't see grandma who's passed away 10 years ago. You know, right. kid, kids see your auras. They see your right. energy around you. And there's dreams. Those are real dreams. And when they are talking to those invisible people or their pretend friends, they're not pretend. They're actually seeing something. They are seeing something. And it's only when we start telling them, no, that's not possible. No, you can't see that. No, that's not okay. Or or, get shut down. We get shut down. Then we turn it off. We just have to turn it off because it's not safe. It's not safe in our life. So children, teenagers go into this realm very easily. And as adults, we just have to, you know, step outside of ourselves and just say, is it possible? Is it possible? And be just so curious. So I understand you're working on a documentary. Is that right? Well, I'm working. I'm actually doing a few things right now. So I've done quite a few uh, shows, TV, and then we're working on, I can't quite tell you, um, but it's just some information. Yes. Dealing with hypnosis, dealing with past life regression, and uh, just opening up more doors for people to be able to experience. Uh, I started doing TV a long time ago, but what happens is that uh, people they're so fascinated with this topic, but then they get a little nervous of putting it on the air um, because they don't know how the, the, you know, the masses and the population are, are going to take it. However, you know, we see, um, you know, ancient aliens, right? Have you seen ancient aliens? Absolutely. Love that show. What's, I'll give you a funny story real quick with that. So I live here in Los Angeles and I live in a, in a location where I'm kind of up in the, what we call up in the hills. And this was, oh my goodness, I think 2000, was it 2012 when the whole world was supposed to shut down and that was it, Armageddon, the oh, that sounds right. computers, mm-hmm. right? Everything was going bye-bye. And I was walking down the street and it was 
it was going to be New Year's and that's when everything was supposed to shut down. And I was talking to my neighbor back there and I said, well, are you ready? The end of the world is coming. I said, I got my champagne. I got strawberries. That's it. This is the last (laughs) day we're going to be on this planet. And I said, I, you know, I have a flat roof and just in case I called on the aliens they are coming down, they're going to pick me up. So I don't have to be here. And he was laughing and he goes, well, do you believe in that stuff? I said, what aliens? He goes, yeah. Do you believe in that? I said, don't you watch ancient aliens? What is wrong with you? Of course, you know, I I do all of this. You know, I do hypnosis. You know, I'm connected with all of that. And then he started talking. And I listened. And I'm like, what'd you what'd you say? Say that again? And no, 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 ancient aliens. And I'm like, oh my God, he is the narrator of ancient aliens. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, he is the one who's the voice on ancient aliens, and he was the narrator. Lives right behind me. I could not believe it. I could not believe wow. it. So you know, but I, I tap into all those all those other modalities as well. But you know, it's, it's it's a fascinating subject. It's fascinating. I'll tell you one more thing. And when we were talking about um, what happens with people who have um, birthmarks or anything on their body and they don't know really why it's there. Uh, it could be a point of injury from another lifetime and also some of the pains that are in the physical body. So I actually had a guy who, um, had just, just problems with his neck, just severe problems with his neck and had this weird scar on the back of his neck. And he never knew really why it was there, but it always hurt doctors kept saying there's nothing there there's nothing wrong with your neck and he tried everything medications well he was going to go do surgery and then somebody said why don't you just go do a past life regression and see if anything comes up and so we went into a past life and sure enough he went back into uh, a point in history where he was in the civil war and he was at war and that was the time when they had the guns with the bay- the bayonets with the knives at the end of the guns. And he got stabbed in the neck with the bayonet. Right. Now, what's really fascinating about this when I do experiences is sometimes I will see changes in, fe- in people's body during the past life. In that past life regression session, his neck began to swell up. Really? At that point of injury. Wow. And that's so he was able to finally realize this is where I'm still holding that cellular energy from it from another lifetime. But his neck literally was swelling up. I've had people speak in different languages. I've had people write in hieroglyphics. I have people who can write in different languages. I've had people go into full blown channel in past lives. So um, I had one person's eye color change. This is why I record it, because when they come back, and you say, well, who was that French person that came into the into the office? And I said, no, that was you. You're speaking fluent French. Well, I don't know how to speak French. Right. Well, in your past life, you did. And so that's wow. why we have that recording of you speaking fluent French. And going into that other lifetime, you're going to experience all of that. But yeah, I, I love it when people can go in there and they actually have the physical reactions. You don't need to. But when that takes place just like with you, then that is a huge release. That is a huge release for it. So it's really, really cool. Well, I could, I, I could talk to you all day. I I love hearing everything you're talking about. Is there anything else that you wanted to hit on before we wrap things up? Well, you know what? I, I just think that we're in a time right now to where there's so much transition going on in this planet and there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of chaos, there's a lot of fear. And it's really important for everybody just to just stop and, and, and really look inside, go inside and ask yourself truly, you know, what do you believe? What do you need? Okay, what feels right to do to you? Forget what everybody else is saying. Don't, don't follow the masses. Okay, follow yourself, because you do have that intuition, you do know exactly what's best for you. And when you can really just connect on a mind body, you know, level and and tap into your soul, you will have these answers and you're going to, you're just going to feel a lot better. So 
turn off the TV, turn off the radio, turn off all the negativity that's out there and just take care of yourself. And remember, everything is a state of hypnosis and everything is an environmental hypnosis. And when you get suggestible to something and you feel like you're getting caught up in, in you know, just the rat race, then take yourself out of that. I teach people actually how to count themselves out of hypnosis. It's as simple as just, you know, if you want to use just a number, one, two, three, four, five, wide awake, count yourself out. Uh, give me a call. Let's do a session. Let's do something. I got a lot of products and uh, different things available, but you are a very, very powerful person. Your mind and body is extremely powerful. And when you can just believe in yourself, then there's nothing that can stop you. So open up your mind, open up your life and make all of those changes and just live this life to the best of your ability and just have a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate your time. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you, by the way, in another lifetime. 